I'm Tom Reinhardt, Deputy Director for Architecture at George Washington's Mount Vernon. We're here in the stable yard, standing in front of George Washington's brick stable. This is actually the third stable that Mount Vernon had. The first was built early in the 18th century, a little distance from here. It was replaced in 1768 by a frame stable that stood right on the same spot as the stable that we're standing in front of. That stable burned in 1781, and in that fire, George Washington lost 10 of his best horses. So in 1782, he instructs his plantation manager, Lund Washington, to construct a new stable. This is larger than the old stable. It's actually 80 by 40 feet, roughly, and it had accommodation for 20 horses in stall rooms on either end with a large central carriage room right in the middle. In the 1790s, Washington made some slight adjustments to this building by building those two louvered dormers on the top, not that central hay door, that was part of the original construction period, but the two louvers were added to increase ventilation. Up in that attic is where Washington stored the hay and the grain that he was going to use to feed his prized horses. The stalls are actually slightly larger than a lot of 18th century stalls. These are big, about nine by five feet wide. So um, Washington was given a lot of room for his uh, horses. The stable forms the southern boundary of a stable yard. This is a cobbled space where Washington was able to take care of his horses, bring them out, um, put them under saddle. Um, it, there was a carriage house across the way, and then the famous dung repository where Washington composted all organic waste from um, the Mansion House farm. This was separated from the remainder of the outbuildings up the South Lane by a large gate, so that kept the animals out. A significant feature of the stable is its material of construction, which as you see is brick. Washington builds it in brick, of course, in response to that fire of 1781. He's building the structure in a fireproof material. But the revolution marks a change in the architecture of Mount Vernon. If we look at the outbuildings that were built before the war, those along the north and south lane, they're all framed. They're made out of wood. This building is the first post-war building. It is constructed of brick fireproofing, but it also is constructed in such a way as to make a statement about Washington's status and his financial stability. He is gentry and he has the money to build a large brick stable. We see this transition to brick also evidenced in the greenhouse and even in the slave quarters that Washington builds on the north part of the estate in the 1790s. So he really makes a changing point before and after the revolution. So the stable becomes um, a center point of the post-war construction period here at Mount Vernon.